10, 14. But the mouth of the foolish is near what? Okay, go ahead. Now check this out. The mouth of the foolish is near what? Destruction. So if you're going to be foolish with your mouth, guess what's coming? Destruction. Okay? All right. Are you hearing this? Yeah. All right, good. I'm listening too. Proverbs 6, 2. You are trapped. You are snared with the words of your mouth. You are taken captive with the words of your mouth. And the next verse says, deliver yourself now. Okay? If you look at the, the Bible there. It says, now deliver yourself, my son. And you can. Look at on the life side. Proverbs 12, 14. A man shout. Shout. What's that mean? Look at this. Here, here's a shout for you. Here's a law. Ready? When I drop, when I let go of this, it shall go down. What? Law. Law. It absolutely will happen all the time. Well, look at all the shouts that God put in his Bible. Look at this one. A man shall be satisfied with good. How? By the fruit of his mouth. Not what your grandma says about you. It's what you say about you. What you say about your situation. What you say about your health. What you say about your wealth. What you say about your children. Okay? Ha oh, ha, you don't know my kids. They're naughty. I mean, they're the worst kids on the block. You keep saying that, guess what you're going to have? Worst kids on the block. Amen. The police will know your children. Are you hearing this? Oh yeah, okay. Praise God. Somebody give me a few pins so I can drop them on the ground at times so you can hear them clink. <laughs> if, now look, if any of this strikes you and you go, well, uh, that could be, oh God, are you talking to me? <clears throat> Should I change something in my life? It's not to beat you over the head. It's to like awaken us so that we can redirect our life. Amen. Do you understand that? Amen. Yep. Okay, but I have a quarter. I don't have a pin. Okay? So I just drop it next time it gets very uh, eerily silent in here. Amen? And don't stop talking. There you go. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, but, okay, here we go. Ready? Verse, where are we? Proverbs 13, okay, 2. 13, 2. A man shall eat good, how? By the fruit of his mouth. So, it should get us to, to hunger and thirst after, you know what? I'm going to start putting right stuff in my mouth and I'm going to keep it there until I see the fruit. Okay? Because it doesn't happen just by a little bit of seed and a little bit of water. Fruit comes with a little bit of seed, time, and harvest. It's seed, time, and harvest. And that's uh, Genesis 8.22. Is that it? One minute. I haven't seen it in a while. Genesis, from now until the end of the earth, there shall be. come on, come on, talk to me, where is it? Genesis 8, huh? 22, hey, I was right. While the earth remains, seed, time, and harvest, cold and heat, summer and winter, day, night, shall not cease. That's why we have called it Day and Night International. Amen. That's one of the reasons. Yeah. Amen. It's also Final Harvest Church because it's the last one. Here we go. Very, look at the, the life side of the Word of God that we speak out of the mouth. And here we go. Verse 3. He that guards his mouth keeps his life. Guards his mouth. If you guard your mouth, you're going to guard your life. But he that opens wide his lips shall have what? Destruction. Shall, shall, shall. So choose your harvest. You want life or you want death? You want blessing or you want cursing? That's in your hand. Amen? Don't blame God. If, if, if you're Miss, Mr. or Miss Negative in your household, don't blame God when all that junk comes on you, okay? Because you have uh, steered yourself in the wrong direction for years and years and years. Today, you can get off of that. Today, like when I had, uh, when I ministered to like couples and things like that, the, one of the first things we do, we'll get them together, we'll have them uh, look in, in, in each other's eyes and this and that, 
and we'll start to say, in the name of Jesus, I break every curse I spoke over you. Please forgive me for cursing you. See, they didn't know that they were cursing that spouse. Okay? And that it was putting a, a big wall between them and it was destroying their marriage. See, a wise woman builds her house. And a wise man too. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. So we do that and then it starts, once that wall is down, then God can start to heal and start working together again. And then you have to start using your words properly to use it for blessing. To bless one another. I love you. I love you. You know what? And some, some marriages that we, we, we ministered to before, you know, uh, if, if the mind and the mouth was going in the wrong direction all day, we just tell them, look, stop that. Start meditating good things about your husband. Not what you can pick on him when he gets home. Amen? Girls, listen to this, okay? Yeah. All right? And husbands go, he's covering this. <laughs> no, no, no. So, no, no. Because, because, yeah, you know, he could have, he should have put this away. He should have done that. He forgot to do this. You know, he's really this way. Next thing you know, they don't know who they're coming home to. Oh, one husband told me that. I don't know who it is every day. Any day it could be Dr. Jekyll or Miss Hyde. I don't know who it is. So I told him, I said, instead of that, open up your Bible to Psalms 112 and start speaking about your, your husband. I'll just read it. Psalms 112. Uh, this is, and if you're single, you can pray this, girls. You can pray. This is what I want. God, give me this. And then, uh, uh, where am I? Psalms? Psalms. I'm going to stay on the subject. Okay, Father. I'm in the middle of your Bible. Psalms what? 112. Yeah. And you can start to say about your husband. Or, and then you can start saying things about yourself. I am. Okay? Blessed is the man that fears the Lord, that delights greatly in his commandments. My husband is a blessed man. He delights greatly in the Lord. What are you doing? You're prophesying over your husband. You're prophesying over your your your. Uh, uh, your God, okay? His seed, his children shall be mighty upon the earth. So here's the woman at home. She's prophesying my husband like this. You know, you don't have to say he's an old, tired out guy. He likes to hang out and, and uh, 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 he's just a potato. What do you call it? A potato. Right. Yeah, he a potato. Or a mouse potato. A what? A mouse potato. Right. Okay. Mouse potato. Okay. He's a, he's a couch potato, bum, bum, bum. He's like this. No, start to say like this. Start prophesying over uh, your husband, your wives, your children. For the wives, you can go to Proverbs 31. And you can even start to say this. As a man, you can say, I fear the Lord. I honor and respect Him. I love Him. I delight greatly in His commandments. My children shall be mighty upon the earth. See, I can declare that. Praise God. Wealth and riches shall be in my house. See, you can declare it over your life. No more stealing, no more killing, no more destroying. As for me and my house, we shall serve the Lord. See, it, even if your, your child it, your, is known for going out there doing drugs and this and that, start saying it today. Bind whatever it is in the name of Jesus and start declaring it over them. Start declaring it over there, over where they sleep. Start laying hands on where they, their clothes. Start laying hands on them. You shall be like this. You're like this. Amen? You're declaring. You don't have to agree with what you see. See? I told my wife, I said, you know, some things going on in our bodies. You don't have to agree with that. You can say, by Christ Christ, they're healed. In Jesus' name. Somebody was on Skype the other day. They said, my baby's like this. My baby uh, is doing better, doing very good now, and, uh, but they had some white stool. Okay? White stool. I said, well, what's the word of God say? By Christ Christ, she's, he's healed. I said, well, let's do it. Okay? Lay hands on the baby. Let's say it again. Command it to be healed. By Christ Christ, you're healed. Amen? You don't move from the word of God. Praise God. God never moves from his word. Amen? Amen. Yeah. Praise God. Amen. You enjoying this? Yes. Yes. So you can say these things. Start saying it. If death and life is in our power of our tongue, then why not fill up our tongues with the right things? If we shall eat the fruit of what we say, then why not we say it right? Amen. Okay? 
If we don't like what we have, change it. You don't like what you're farming, what your what your harvest is, change what you're sowing. Is that right? Yes. Yes. Now we're in charge of what we sow, we're in charge of watering. This is woohoo. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. Let me get the there you go. That's if you need it, get it. Go ahead. Okay, here we go. That's on the life on the life side. So, uh, so look at this, verse thirteen three, and then we're gonna move on. Okay, Proverbs thirteen three. He that guards his mouth guards his life, but he that opens wide his lips. And some of you have got some wide lips friends. Is that right? They wide. They lippy. Okay. They got like four lips, you know what I'm saying? Four lips of destruction. Is that right? Yeah. Some friends you like that? Don't let them be your friends too long because that stuff gets in your, your ears and then into your heart. Okay? Tell them, look, man, we don't want to talk about that. Okay? Don't talk like that around me. Yeah, well, it's just the truth. Well, it's the truth because you've been saying it for 500 years. You know? That's what's going on in your life. What? And then you whip out your, your class. I just took this class. Okay, get it out. <laughs> there's you and there's me. See? I'm on the life side and you're on the death side. <laughs> See? You know what? I'm a fool's mouth in his destruction. Yo, I can't believe you're talking to me like that. What's up with that? I thought we were friends. Yeah, uh -uh. well, you tell me. We are friends. Okay? Well, we're on two sides of a fence here. Okay? You're destroying yourself. And, and I'm not anymore. Okay? Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. Well, praise the Lord. Now, look. The psalmist David, King David said, put a guard on my mouth. Okay? He said that. So, he had to say that. You can pray like that too. Praise God. Amen. God will help you. There you go. Look at James. You got to see this one. This is great. And now we're going to get into Mark. The letter, and you're going to enjoy this, okay? Because I have a friend of mine, and uh, uh, I told him, I said, you know, he's, he's putting out uh, 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 advertisements of his work uh, into mailboxes and different things like that. I said, don't just do that. I said, why don't you add some faith to it, okay? Faith speaks, faith acts, faith projects, you know, proclaims, prophesies. And so I said, look, you put this in the mailbox, you say, you are, you are coming to Jesus Christ and you're giving me your business. Okay? You're coming to Jesus Christ and the business is mine. You're coming to Jesus Christ. So he's just putting in the mailbox. Zoom, zoom, zoom. And from now on, that's the way it goes. And the more he said it, the more his faith grows, and the more he's starting to see things come to pass. Amen? Amen. Hello, you can direct your life. You direct. Okay. You don't believe me? Look at James 3. Come on. Verse 2. For in many things we offend all. Isn't that right? How many times have you ever put your foot in your mouth and you said the wrong thing? Praise God. You knew you shouldn't have, but you said it anyway. Amen? Yeah. Huh? Tell your neighbor, is he talking about you? Yep. Yeah, that's right. Yes. Amen. So, here we go. You guys drove, if some of you are thinking that, man, I drove all the way here for this. Yeah. Right. God, I could have whipped myself somewhere else. <laughs> no, this is not for whipping. This is for awakening. Okay? Awakening. And refreshment and direction. You're getting revelation from heaven. See? You can go home. If you used to been speaking the wrong words over your, your family, over your, your business, over, over your finances, over your, your, your children, you can break that today in Jesus' name. I break every curse. I've, spat, I've spoken that over my family, my children. I break any curse I've ever spoken over you in Jesus' name. I bless you. I bless you. You are so beautiful. You're wonderful. The Word of God says you shall be taught of the Lord and great shall be your peace. I tell that to my children. You shall grow like all the trees around. You're his little prophetess and prophetesses. You know, you're worshipers of God. I tell them over my, over my children. And I shall have what I say. Period. No devil in hell can stop that. Watch this. James 3. And you're going to see that in Mark chapter 4, 11. Ready? Read. For in many things we offend all. If any man offends not in word, 
The same is a perfect man, complete. And able to what? Bridle or control the whole body. Behold, we put bits in the horse's mouth. How many of you have horses? Okay, well that's not this class. Okay, how many of you have rid rode a horse before? Okay, you know what a bit is? Yeah. Bit, it goes in the teeth, okay? And you, okay, it goes in the, in the mouth, you got it right. We put bits in the horse's mouths that they may obey us. And we turn their whole body. Wow. And who's stronger, the horse or the person riding it? The horse. That's right. But little bit turns the whole body into a horse. <coughs> but in Nagaland, we have very small horses, okay? I'll show you pictures of my, my old horse, okay? And uh, they're like dwarfs, man. So, I don't know where they come from, but they were cursed, okay? <laughs> Just tell me. Okay. But anyway, they're so cute. <laughs> All right, there we go. We put, to turn them, okay, verse 4. Now, take a look at the ships. Even though they be so great, they're driven by fierce winds, yet they are turned around with a very small rudder, wherever the governor steers it. Amen? That whole ship will turn around. Even the Titanic had a rudder. Okay? Huge ship. And wherever they turn that rudder, it's going to go. It might have taken a little bit of time. It's turning. But they hold it this way, it's going to turn. So, so, so they just turn it too late. Amen? Amen? And they hit the... Iceberg. Right. And then Leonardo DiCaprio. Why this guy didn't just get out of the water and stay on the thing with her? I don't understand that. Okay? What's up with that? It wouldn't be a movie. That's right. It was in, not in the script. Okay? There you go. But at least it started to turn. Amen? So now watch. Even so, the tongue is a little member. Mm -hmm. And it's able to burn up many things. Just with that one tongue, you can start World War III. Amen? Yeah. Verse 5, uh, 9. With the tongue, we bless God, even the Father. And with the tongue, we curse men, which are made after the likeness of God. How many of you have done that? <coughs> Praise the Lord. Amen. How many of you are lying about that? Okay, I didn't see any hands go up. So. Okay. Amen. Yes, you can. Verse 10. Out of the same mouth proceeds blessing and cursing. My brethren, these things should not be so. Amen? So God wants you to choose life. All the time. We choose life. Now look at Mark 11, 12. And this is what you're going to see. <coughs> you can direct your life on anything now. Mark 11, 12. And on the morrow, when they were come from Bethany, Jesus was hungry. And seeing a fig tree far off, having leaves, he went over to it. Okay, so he took leaves, and the guys were with him. If happily, he might find anything thereon. And when he came to it, he found what? Nothing but leaves. Okay. For the time of faith was not yet. Verse 14. And Jesus answered and said to it. So what, what? Jesus what? Answered and said to it. So the tree was speaking. Amen? The tree says, you ain't going to get nothing here. Nothing here. See? Nothing. Nothing for you. No. And Jesus answered it and said. Well, he spoke back to it. Is that right? Right. He said, no man eat fruit from you hereafter forever. <laughs> Amen? Mm -hmm. Now watch this. And his disciples heard it. Wow. Jesus. Come on over here. Come on. Come on. Get under this thing here. You've been in the sun too long, Master. Rabbi. <laughs> Rabbi. Please. Come. They had seen him do a lot of things. But this time, he's talking to a tree. He's seen him talk to people. He's seen him do it. But you know what? They also saw him talk to wind, talk to waves,
talk to invisible devils. Wow. Talk to body parts. The mountains. Yes. Amen. Let's see what happens. Verse 14. Okay. Over here. Verse 20. And in the morning, as they passed by, they saw the fig tree dried up in the roots. Day before, they heard him speak. Day later, they saw. Jesus spoke, and now they see. He said it, and now they have it. Amen? But when he spoke, when he spoke, no man eat fruit from you forever. It was still green, and the wind was blowing, and all these other things. But when he spoke that faith-filled word, it hit the root of that thing, and it started to dry up. Usually you see it from the branches down. Is that right? You yeah. see it from the branches, slowly, slowly, slowly. No. Well, how do they know it was dried up from the roots? Okay? How do they know that? My guess is it just went like this from the roots and even toppled over maybe or started to lean over. You get it? Yes. From the roots. They could even, wow, whoa, whoa, look at that! So Peter was like, look at this thing! Hey, what, do we, what do you say? I'll, I'll try to say it the way he said it, okay? And Peter, ha, huh, look at this master! Verse 21. Behold, look at the fig tree which you cursed! It is withered away. The fig tree you cursed is withered. The fig tree you cursed is withered. The marriage you cursed is withered. The finances you cursed is withered. The children you cursed is withered. Mm -hmm. Is that right? The mother-in-law that you cursed, that relationship is withered. Is that right? Oh, Say, Lord, thank God I'm sitting down. <laughs> Amen? Okay, well, let's move on. But that was Jesus. No, that's for us. Watch this. Verse 22. Next page. You enjoying this? Yes. So this is the power of the tongue. This is the power to prophesy your future. Okay? You can change your future today. That's right. Verse 22. And Jesus answering said, Don't anyone try this at home. Did he say that? No. Huh? Nobody else can talk to fig trees except me. Is that what he said? No. He didn't say that? No. Well, how come we act like that? Huh? I don't really have Did he say, I got a John Deere, I got a new thing with a John Deere thing, and I got, I got the right uh, uh, gasoline mix, and I'm going to cut that thing? Did, is that how we cut down the tree? No. <laughs> how do you do it? Whoa, 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 what do you do? How do you do it? Spoke. Yes. We were at somebody else's house one day, just a little while ago, and he said, man, we're waiting for our house to sell. I said, we're praying today. Guess what? We're going to pray. This thing's going to sell. Okay? So he said, okay. I said, you want it to sell? He said, yes, you want it, I want it to sell. I said, okay. In the name of Jesus. And I turned around and I spoke to the house. You will sell in Jesus' name. For the right price that they want. Is that right? Were you there? Okay. Yes, you were there. You're going to sell now in Jesus' name. I declare you sold. So let's say amen. 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 So we said amen. Praise, and he's like, praise the Lord. I'll, I'll agree with that. I said, good. And two days later, or three, he's not here. A few days later, someone came, but they didn't give the right price. Okay, doesn't matter. Okay. And, uh, but then someone came after that, and they negotiated, and they're happy with that price. And it's already sold, okay? Because they stopped trying to get it sold, they told it to sell in the name of Jesus. Jesus. Amen. This is Mark 1123. Please note it down. There's a lot of things you don't have to pray about. You can just start speaking it out. Write it down, because it also rhymes, okay? You don't have to pray about, you can start speaking it out. Well, if God said it, you can say it. Okay? Amen? Amen. Amen. Let's do it. Mark eleven twenty three. <laughs> For verily, verily, I say unto you. Oh, first of all, he said 22. Have 
God, have faith in God or have God's kind of faith. Have the kind of faith that God uses. And that's what Jesus was doing. When he was on the planet, he never, he, he would say things and that was it. Done deal. He just believed it's going to come to pass. Okay, here we go. Verse 23. <laughs> For verily of a truth I say to you, whoever shall say, whoever shall say to this mountain, be thou removed, be cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall what? Believe those things which he says shall come to pass. He shall have whatever he says. But what if the devil's around? He shall have whatever he says. But what about if the global economy is in a certain position? He shall have whatever he says. You understand? So that means it has nothing to do with our circumstantial evidence. Amen? Amen. It has nothing to do with it. If we say it, we believe it, and, and it doesn't say even positive or negative things there. He just gave the truth. This is the truth. I let it go, it shall drop. You speak it, believe it, it's coming to pass. Okay? And no devil in hell can stop it from coming to pass. Amen. 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 He could have added it in there, but when he said, you shall have that also included in there. <coughs> Are you hearing this? Amen. Shall we drop the pen again? Yeah. Why so small, Pastor? Why not bigger? That's about the same size. Okay. Cool. Okay, you ready? You enjoying this? Yes. Okay, good. So, so this should start stirring us up. Huh. What should, I got to go home and start speaking some things. Amen. 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 I got to start speaking. I want to find out what does God say about my situation? What does he say about your health? What does he say about your wealth? What does he say about your family? Find those promises and start to speak them out. Because he will yes and amen it. As a matter of fact, he has told us to do that in his word. Look at uh, Joshua 1.8. Joshua took over from Moses and he said, verse, verse 8, This book of the law shall not depart out of your mouth, but you shall what? Meditate. The word meditate means to speak out loud, to mutter over and over and over, and to roar. You shall roar the word of God. Roar out the word of God. Day and night. Why? That you may observe. When you observation will come, you'll have revelation. Once you start to meditate that word and speak it day and night about something, whew, you're going to have revelation. You're going to understand something. And then you're going to be able to do the word.